So I'm going to get out of the wind, so you can hear me, but this is Buttsbury Church, or it's actually called St Mary's of Buttsbury. Let's get some protection over under here. Yeah. So, Buttsbury's not far from three towns actually, or villages. So you've got Billericay over there in the distance, which is about three miles. And you get there by just turning down this road. You have to go across the Buttsbury Wash. And if you look over there, straight ahead, you can actually see a lot of water, and that is from the River Wid. So the River Wid snakes around all the way down to the Buttsbury Wash, and then it basically continues along here. If you go up there, you've got Ingate Stone Hall, which you can walk to very quickly, and then it then meanders to the bottom of the hill here, and it goes off to Margaretin. The River Wid is a big part of Buttsbury. So, another important part is this road here, which goes off to Stock, which is about two miles. Buttsbury and Stock were at one time connected, more or less. And if you take the road here, this goes to Ingate Stone. So let's enter this old church. I'm going to take my cap off, so I always try and do that. So, this porch is built, was built either side of Victorian period, so it's not too old, but the church itself is really old. Now I just wanted to explain to you a few things before we go in. Got, I find it quite interesting looking at the graffiti. Almost looks like Latin, some of it. And we've got a nice 1772. They really seem to put some effort in to writing back then. You've got more going on here. Uh, what is interesting, there is a mass dial straight ahead here. And if you look there, there would have been a pin, a piece of wood, and that would have cast a shadow. So before this porch was built, this would tell the congregation what time to come in, you've got a few lines there. So the door is 14th century, so the experts tell us. <coughs> now, this church was re heavily renovated in the 14th century, but it predates that by quite a lot. Um, We've got flowers from the Harvest Festival, the ladies here, they do a lovely job of making sort of nice presentations of flowers. So we go in. Oh, there's another interesting feature here. Um, this is what they call the poor man's aspirin. And here also, you'll find this on churches. And um, they believe that when these churches were built and then they were blessed, they would have, um, from my understanding, been blessed by a priest 12 times on all the entrances, exits, etc. And it would have made this stone holy. And in the medieval periods, people would have scraped this out and mixed it with oil or wine or beer and drank it. They may have been sick of the ailments. It's got a lovely clunk. So we close this old door. And it's surprisingly quiet in here. Must be due to the thick walls. So here we have the original Norman arch. So now we've just entered into the South Isle. This is 15th century, and the same with the North Isle, which is in the distance there. The nave 
his 14th century here. And the same with Chancel up there in the, in the distance there. But this is where it gets interesting. Um, this church um, dates to 11, before 1190. It's documented as being in existence in 1190, and it looks like it was given to the nunnery of St. Leonard Attebow <coughs> in London, or Stratford, if we could change name. So it looks like the nuns would come here and um, seek solace. And also there was a hermitage cell here, so you would have had a hermit living here. Now originally, Buttsbury goes back to the Saxon period, and before that the Roman period. But St Botolph, in the 8th century, is believed to come through here and preach under a pear tree. And I like to think that this is where they built the church. That he, will, he came down from Linda's farm in Northumberland. And before him, St. Said and St. Chad, in the 7th century, they also came down. Um, and um, St. Seed, I can tell you, or St. Said, he established... Great Bursted Church, which is called St Mary Magdalene now, which is about three and a half miles from here. So what have we got here? Well, we've got incredibly old door. This also is 12th century. This is carbon dated to 1150. They, as I understand it, a Norwegian um, wanted to prove the Norwegian university wanted to prove the age of this. And then what happened was this was drilled and the core samples were sent off to Oxford. Came back 1150. That's the felling date. What makes it interesting is the staves. And I think they're called rows, which is similar construction to Viking and Saxon. You've got another one there. And also these hinges are incredibly rare because the way they designed, there's another hinge, more or similar, which is in Raynham Church. If you look at the floors, brick um, until last century, they were, it was mud. <coughs> you can also see the original bases of columns gives you an idea of how it's changed in design. We've got graffiti here, which I found. I found this very interesting. So 1949, so we're talking four years after World War II. These guys, ALS and Mr. Shipton, they were repairing bomb damage of some sort. I did find out that there was a V1 that landed where the modern Buttsbury wash is now. So it could be on this side of it, which is not that far. I know I'm jumping around a lot here, but we've got so much to talk about. 17th century slabs on the floors, which are quite interesting in themselves. You read the language. And I try not to step over them, but it's very hard. And we've got the one here. I mean, only 60 years after the Mayflower sailed. Remember that four pilgrims sailed from Billericay. Or they, they lived in Billericay and Great Burst did. So we've got the nave. Uh, sorry, the chancel. We have monument on the wall, which I researched. This young fella died at 27 in Penang. He didn't have any children, but his family, the Hardys, they um, lived just a few minutes walk from here on a farm, which still exists. 
and they went back generations. They employed various people and they had about 270 acres of fair size. So we've got some interesting features here. We've got the, if you can see that with a light, a bit tricky. This is a doom painting carved on a panel of wood. Can't tell you what it is. It looks like oak. And it depicts Christ in the middle with an angel holding the nail on the right side and on the left side an angel with the Holy Spear. Well, I call it Holy Spear. It's what the Romans pierced him with to prove that Christ was dead. Now, this was found up there in the 15th century timbers. And you can see beautiful crown posts there, all original. This was, um, <clears throat> this lovely ceiling was actually boxed in and it was discovered and left exposed. Why not? It's the most beautiful work. Also in the 80s, this um, priest door on the north side was discovered. It's unbelievable these things are blocked up. It could have been to do the Reformation, I'm not sure. Also, this is a piss sign. I believe it's, I might have pronounced that wrong. So we enter the high, most holy part where the altar is, but this is fascinating. This is 600 years old. This is also blocked up. You can imagine a builder putting his chisel through here, exposing a void. And this is where the, in the Catholic times, the oil and the water would have been kept. I certainly wouldn't, the priest certainly wouldn't let a guy like me walk up here in those times. We've got some lovely Victorian floor tiles, which are just gorgeous. And um, these beautiful candle and crucifix uh, was from a designer. I believe he's called King. And they were blessed by the Bishop of Chelmsford, I believe, in the 60s. And there you can see some of the lovely work that the ladies have done. So, make my way down. So why are there so many candle holders? Well, it's basically because there's no electricity. There never has been. Uh, I believe it's about 35. So in the winter, as we're entering it now, this will be lovely, atmospheric. You can imagine it. it will be chilly. There's no heating. And there's no running water. But it just adds to the... Sincerity, sincerity of it. If you look at these, uh, if you're not aware, these are kneelers and these are made various periods of time. And um, kneelers are added for various occasions. You have one there for the Golden Jubilee of Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. There is a, uh, looks like a bishop's hat there. There's another one. They really are fantastic. It's got Remembrance, World War I, which we can go on to actually now. Jog my memory. So over here is a very unusual memorial. I'm going to take this off to show you the carvings. And you can just see the beautiful work, craftsmanship. So August 14, 1914 to November 1918. So World War I, the Great War as they call it. But what makes it unusual is that on the left side gives all the soldiers that left for service. 
and the same on the right side. And these will all be local lads. And in it, and it says there, uh, not the best word to be using, executed, but it's timeless, I guess. And then in the middle, men killed in action or died from other causes. And this is unusual, I've been told. May well be the only one in the country like this. There we go. So these brave lads died from here. These windows are fairly modern, although the stonework is, I think it's 15th century. But what's unusual is the glass at the top is original medieval. All the rest has been knocked out in the English Reformation. If you look at this church, it's incredibly plain windows. So everywhere, apart from those two sections. Um, we have a visitor's book, which is quite nice to fill in if you come here. People here respect that people put something in there. Nice. There's some nice postcards if you wish to purchase one. It goes to funds that go towards restoration of church. Got a lovely historic book, which goes into more detail than I've talked about. And there's also a donation box there if you just want to put some coins in. <clears throat> so it's a fairly modern font. I'm not exactly sure of the age, but it doesn't look too old. Could be wrong on that one. But this bell rope does attach to a 15th century bell. A single bell which was made by Henry Jordan of London. And Henry Jordan of London made over a hundred bells and it's incredibly famous and um, in the mid 19th century there were various priests, uh, reverends that actually wrote books on bells and they toured the country and Henry Jordan is in there and it's quite unusual that he would be in such a small church as this So we're going to go outside and um, you have to bear with me the wind. I'm going to show you the rear, the north door. Put my hat back on. Okay. So if you look in the distance, you can actually see Ingate Stone Hall. It's really recommended. It's a Tudor house that's open on Sundays, but please check online. It's well worth a visit. I believe Elizabeth I was there. And it's Catholic. It was a Catholic. The family's still there. So the crowd usually in there survived, they survived the Reformation. And here we have the door. Now I believe this dates to possibly King Knut, around 1016. He was here for 30 years, the Danes. If you look here, this sea hinge is possibly Scandinavian or Norse. It chases its tail. You have two of these which are really unusual. In the middle there, there is a monster, sea monster, which is possibly a lot longer and bits have been snapped off over the hundreds of years. It's been said that he's Saxon. <coughs> it's hard to say. We've got an observation window, which in the old days would have allowed people to see who's coming in. So not let them if they're undesirable. Maybe if they had diseases. <coughs> Let's have a look at this. And there is the uh, the north door, or the priest door, which is blocked up. And if you look here, 
you can see just how crooked the old craftsmanship was in the old days. But it's great to see. And you can see that original glass still there. tower that was rebuilt. If you look on the top you can see the unusual ball. And I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.